Sometimes you get an appliance or an industrial machine that is just not happy with the local voltage. Either the voltage is too low for operation or it's too high and it causes it to overheat. And this used to be a real common problem in British factories because occasionally we'd get 220 volt uh, electrical equipment shipped in that had clearly been pushed to the edge for 220 volts. And when you put on a 240 volt supply, things like transformers and other equipment in it would start burning out uh, on a regular basis. They just weren't happy because they were just being pushed that bit harder. So uh, this is a way you can use a standard transformer to deliberately nudge the voltage down. That works with lamps as well. You find with some lamps, they have a very short lifespan if run well, all tungsten lamps, if you overrun them by even just 5%, it will shorten their lifespan greatly. It will pretty much half their lifespan. Um, in this case, I'm using this little transformer for the demo, and it doesn't look like a transformer. It looks like a fluorescent light and ballast, but it is a transformer. And it's got the uh, 240 volt input, and it's got the 11.5 volt output to the halogen lamp at about 4 amps. In reality, uh, the supply voltage at the moment is actually 248 volts here. Yeah, it's quite high. Look at that. That is beacon. That's because it's quite late at night. Everybody's gone to bed. I'm the only person on the transformer locally, apparently, and the voltage has floated up. That's what happens with transformers. Uh, as you load them down, the voltage drops. There's, it's called a uh, sort of internal regulation of transformer. And uh, in the case of uh, this if it was being run at 240 volts, with 11.5 volts being fed to a 12 volt lamp, it would reduce its output, you know, a modest amount. It would be a little bit less white, it would be uh, a little bit less intense, but the lifespan of a lamp like this would be pretty much doubled uh, for being underrun. And that was the whole point of these transformers, it kind of saved lamp life which was significant. I remember when these first came out and they were just an absolute disaster initially. And the transformers were a disaster too. It was just, it was a very exciting time. So this transformer, as I say, it's, uh, it's narrow like this because these are designed to mount in the ceiling as downlights. And it's designed to be, you bring wires out the ceiling, you hook them into the transformer, and then you just basically slip them up through the hole and uh, into the ceiling. And that does mean that they not only rest on the ceiling, make loud buzzing 50 hertz noises, but uh, you've got these fairly well shrouded terminals, but I prefer terminals above the ceiling to be enclosed fully. So when I moved in, one of the first things I did was uh, I got different fittings, put them that fit in the same hole, but they use the GU10 holders that you can use a 240 volt lamp straight in them. And it turns out that was quite a good move because it's a lot quieter. It's not quite the same crispness of halogen, but it's actually a general improvement. It's actually pretty good. Uh, if I plug this in now, here's some interesting things to note. Notice this wire dangling out. That's for a reason. It's for science. If I plug this in with the 50 watt uh, lamp in it, the power being shown here, although this is actually 12 volts it's putting out to this because of the increased voltage, the power that's being dissipated is about 62 watts. 50 watts of that is the lamp itself, and this is dissipating 12 watts. This is going to get hot after a while, and slightly buzzier, as they usually do. But the power factor is pretty impressive at 0.9 under full load. However, if you unplug it and you take the lamp out, so imagine the lamp's blown, then the power consumption of this driver, just with copper and iron losses, is still 5.3 watts, which is coincidentally more than the lamp that replaced it. And that's with the, the lamp not lit. And the power factor drops to an absolutely horrific 0.15. Now, the power factor is a relationship between the voltage and current. Normally, it's not much of an issue, but if the power companies start charging for uh, apparent power, then theoretically, this ballast here, this uh, transformer, with the dead lamp in it, is going to cost uh, 0 0.143 times 2, 4, well actually let's, it's almost 249 volts at the moment. Wow. This is going to uh, cost the equivalent of 35 watt lamp to run just with no lamp in it uh, if they start charging. And they can. The smart meters can actually charge for apparent power. It's, it's going to happen at some point because the power companies are run by greedy little, yes, people. I'll try not to swear. So uh, anyway, that's a moot point. This is the, the transformer that I've just chosen for this little demo of how you can actually drop or increase the voltage to another load. So let's whip those uh, connections out. 
And you'll notice that I've been all very John Ward about this. I've put nice little ferrules on. And let me show you, I, I got this crimper from eBay recently because I didn't have a crimper handy. And I wanted to see how good this was. So this, uh, if I zoom down this and show you, it's quite neat. These ferrules are designed to, well, I'll thread one over a wire. So here's all the loose strands of the wire. It's designed to keep them all neatly together by threading it over and provide a little shield over the insulation. It looks smart and it provides a good uh, contact area rather than just squishing the strands out under screw terminals. So this tool to crimp them actually has six little wedges that close down like an iris and crimp it. And it's interesting because it's based on pressure. So when I close this down, it doesn't matter the diameter of the ferrule, it will push to a particularly given pressure. And then when you release it, it's put that nice gripping pattern into them. And the ones I used to use, I used to put ferrules in all the cables in my control panels, was just the traditional plier that just puts little indents in. But if you consider it, it's not that critical because once you've put it into the terminal, the terminal itself actually displaces the metal down anyway. But this is quite a nice finish. This is quite neat. It has put those little indents all around it and it seems to be quite secure. So getting on to this, let's bring the notepad in and I'll show you what I'm going to do. So imagine you've got a piece of industrial equipment and it's rated for 220 volts, but you're giving it 240 volts and you want to drop the voltage to it because it is causing problems. Uh, if you uh, had a transformer, you could bring in a traditional transformer with a 240 volt winding, fully isolated, and you could have the 240 in, oh, 240 in, and the primary, and you could have a 220 volt out. That'd be one way of doing it. The other way of doing it would be an uh, auto transformer. An auto transformer has a tapped winding and just a single winding around the whole transformer is effectively, that's almost like the, the secondary, but it's not isolated from the main one. It's just a cheaper way to make them. And you have the neutral connect down here or zero volts, as it's often referred to. You have the 240 volt supply connected here and you've got a tap at 20 volts. So you get 220 volts out of this point. The slight downside of these is that if this uh, winding goes open circuit, uh, you end up getting 240 volt to the load. Uh, but having said that, it's kind of a rareish type of thing to happen. The other way you can do this, and the way I'm going to show you, is just to use an ordinary transformer. It's the cheapest and easiest way to do it. If you get an ordinary transformer, so you've got the 240 volt primary, you've got live, you've got neutral, uh, and it's coupled across to a secondary. In this case, let's do it at 12 volts, just so it's accurate. So we've got 240 volts in, and we get the 12 volts out. What you can actually do, if you've got a lamp that you want to run at that lower voltage, so there's that lamp, you can connect the uh, neutral direct to the lamp, and then you can take the live through the secondary transformer and then to the lamp. And what happens then is that you're getting your 240 volt supply, but then it's either going to add or subtract the 12 volts depending on which way round you connect this winding. And I can prove that right now. So let's uh, bring this in. Let's get rid of the hoppy at the moment because uh, I don't need the hoppy right now and it's shimmery display can be quite distracting on the camera. I don't see it shimmering, it just uh, happens on the camera. So let's, uh, this is the 240 volt winding. This is the 12 volt winding. Let's just put this loop, the neutral across to one of these connections and it'll either it's a very much a trial and error thing. It will either increase the voltage by 12 volts or it will decrease it. And to test this, I'm going to bring in the proper, just since I'm doing all sort of mains electrical stuff, let's bring in the daddy meter, the, the fluke. It's bigger, it's bolder, it's rougher, it's tougher. In other words, sucker, there is no other. It's the dominant meter. So I'm going to turn that on. And... I'm going to put this across the input supply and show you the voltage at the moment, which is 200 and just short of 245 volts. The output open circuit with no load on it is about 13.5 volts. If I then go, because I've looped the neutral through this, the, so this winding is now in series the neutral. If I go from the live here to the other side, this winding, 
it's showing 258 volts because it's added that output voltage about 13 volts onto the original volts which, voltage which was about 244, 244.6 plus the secondary voltage has given me 258 volts. So that would actually boost the voltage up. However, if I swap this wire to the other side of the winding, effectively turning it round, and I measure it again, it will subtract that voltage from the main supply. So here's the main supply, it's 244.7 and now because it's subtracting it Oh that's kind of, that's even lower, that's really low, what the heck is going on there? What is the output voltage in that? That is wrong, what the heck's going on there? I think I've got a bad connection in here I've definitely got a bad connection in here, or something shorted out. Maybe this transformer's gubbed. I'm just going to tighten things up. That is not the reading that I'm expecting here. I'll just tighten that screw down just to make sure it's making a connection. Well, well, that's this all gone horribly wrong. Excellent. That's what we want. Things that go wrong, and because it's bigclav.com, that will be included. So uh, let's check the voltage in the primary again. 244. Let's check the voltage in the secondary. That's better. I think it was just a bad connection then. So now if I put this in here, it should deduct it, and the voltage is closer. It's down to 230 volts because it's now deducted uh, that 13.5 volts from the 245 volts. So that's how you can just knock the uh, the voltage down. And the interesting thing about this is that the only current, the only sort of uh, current in the load that this, this transformer sees is the sort of uh, the voltage it's dropping. Let me bring the notepad in and show you what I mean by that. So if you had a really high power load, uh, like say 1000 watts, then at, normally at the 240 volt supply that would be about 4 amps and you'd think you'd need a really high power rate to transform for that but you don't all this transformer sees is the 4 amps going through this winding at the 12 volts so that means a 50 volt amp transformer would be enough for that 1000 watt supply if it was just dropping the 12 volts to it it's a, it's a very neat simple way of doing things I've made these before for friends who had uh, electrical equipment that was misbehaving. One that uh, immediately comes to mind was a uh, ballast for a imported uh, germicidal lamp and the ballast was getting so hot it was actually chipping out, it was cutting out, it was blowing its thermal fuse inside and he'd gone through a load of these from the same supplier. I made him a uh, unit that dropped it from 240 to about 220 volt and he said that the difference in temperature was staggering. You know, it really ran a lot cooler and that was the end of the problems he had with it. So um, yeah, that's how you can repurpose a traditional simple transformer uh, to nudge the voltage up or down to a mains voltage supply.